Moore. Here. Scott. <laughs> Waters. Here. Capron. Here. Gretkin. Here. We have a moment of silent prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, please. Oh. Okay, thank you. Proclamations. We have Brendan Richards and Andrea Buckley. Please come to the podium. And did you unmute us? Lisa, how are yes. You? All right. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Dan, if you could stand on the other side of the podium, we'll be able to hear you a lot better. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. You're very welcome. It's nice to be here today. <laughs> you can all hear in the back okay, though, seriously, from the podium? Good. Okay, proclamation. Whereas, for over 50 years, community health centers have provided high-quality, affordable, comprehensive primary and preventative health care in our nation's underserved communities delivering value to and having a significant impact on America's health care system. And whereas the country's largest primary care network, health centers now serve as the health care home for over 25 million Americans in over 10,000 delivery sites across the nation. One in every 13 people in the United States gets their care in a community health center. And whereas every day, health centers are developing new approaches to integrating a wide range of services beyond primary care, including oral health, vision, behavioral health, and pharmacy services to meet the needs and challenges of their community. And whereas the Siouxland Community Health Center is a critical economic engine helping to power the local economy by generating millions of dollars in combined economic impact and job creation. Health centers save the entire health system billions of dollars annually by managing chronic conditions and keeping patients out of costlier, costlier health care settings like hospital emergency rooms. And whereas National Health Center Week offers the opportunity to recognize Americans health centers, <laughs> their dedicated staff, board members, and all those responsible for their continued success and growth. Now therefore, I, Dan Moore, Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Sioux City, Iowa, on behalf of the Mayor and City Council, do hereby proclaim August 4 through 10, 2019, as National Health Center Week, and extend our sincere appreciation to the Siouxland Community Health Center for its years of dedicated service to the people of Siouxland. Thank you so much. I'd like to have you say a few words. Here. You both can go too. Yes. We'd love Sounds to hear good. From you. That's well, thank amazing. When you when you read this and hear about it, it's amazing what your center has done in this community. So thank you. Thank you very much. This is always a great time of uh, year for us. Our National Health Center Week had just kicked off this last Saturday. We did a free rummage sale on our site. We had about 400 people come through. 26 tables full of clothes stacked about two to three feet high. Uh, homeless, people disadvantaged that came through and that kind of kicked off our week and, and now it's going on uh, the rest of this week with this and then many other events we're having. I don't know if a lot of people realize we have uh, just under 30,000 patients at the health center, which is kind of amazing. So, And we have, I think as of yesterday, 266 <coughs> staff. So we're definitely a, wow. a large employer. A lot of people don't realize that. We were just talking about that five minutes ago, that people don't realize how big we actually are. So thank you so much. Andrea, thank you, you for like all you do. A few words? I, I would just say um, I'm here. I'm the vice chair of our board, and I'm also a patient at the health center, and my whole family is. We've been patients there for going on 10 years, and 
as, as a board member, we're so happy to be in the communi community <coughs> and as a patient. Um, we're very grateful for the level of care that we can receive at the health center. So thank you so much for um, the proclamation and we're happy to accept it from you. <laughs> Thank, thank you. you. And thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll have a presentation by Campus Compact intern, Tani Russell, outlining her experience as a summer outreach intern. Tani, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Hello, my name is Tani Russell and I'm a senior at Morningside College. I'm double majoring in religious studies and studio art. I was a part of the summer internship program and chosen to intern with the Human Rights Commission for an eight week internship. This is the second year that Tyson Foods has coordinated with Iowa Campus Compact and local colleges to offer select students an opportunity to work with local nonprofits. This program provides full-time college students with an eight week paid summer job at a community organization at no cost to the organization, providing select college students with an invaluable opportunity to spend the summer gaining professional experience while making a positive impact with local communities. Some of my responsibilities while working with the Human Rights Commission was to increase public awareness about fair housing rights and the HRC services, develop an outreach campaign to reach immigrant and disenfranchised communities, develop pop-up events at local businesses or locations, go to attend outreach of, at community events, contact local minority businesses to post fair housing information and HRC materials. The community impact that I was able to achieve in this eight week period was a variety of community engagements I attended and created over 10 community engagements, as well as ongoing pop-up events. A citywide distribution of information, unity in the community picnic, and Lewis Pole pop-up park, just to name a few. Lessons learned while attending was network, event planning, functioning of nonprofit activities and outreach, expanding my knowledge about discrimination laws and fair housing practices, learning about the processes of intake, investigation, and resolution. In closing, I'd like to say my personal experience being a Tyson summer intern at the Sioux City Human Rights Commission has given me a wealth of insights and knowledge that I did not have prior, but unexpectedly, I also gained a perspective on the city that I call home. During my eight weeks internship, I have worked with a variety of nonprofit agencies, ministries, church organizations, local businesses, event planners, and other city agencies like the Parks and Recreations. And I have found sincere, honest people who are all striving for the good of the city, not for personal gain or recognition, but because they love what they are doing, and they honestly care about the community that they serve. It has been an honor and a privilege to be a part and to be chosen for this Tyson Summer Internship and to work with the Human Rights Commission. I will continue my personal growth, knowledge, and development as I remain working with the HRC, which strives diligently for the betterment of Sioux City. Well, thank, thank you. you. Nice, yeah. nice presentation. You know, we, we thank Tyson Foods for their sponsorship of such a, an important internship program. So I'm glad to see you're part of it. And uh, Human Rights Commission is a very critical uh, commission that we have serving uh, Siouxland and Sioux City. And so you were very fortunate to actually intern with the Human Rights Commission, in my opinion. Any other comments or? Well, we appreciate all your input. And and interesting on top of it. So, you know what? The Human Rights Commission helps all of us come together. So that's what, that's what we're about. So we appreciate your hard work. Thank you. Thank you thank very, you very thank much. you very much. And thank you, Karen, as well, for continuing this. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good job. We'll go on to our consent agenda. Items three through 16 F constitute a consent agenda. Items pass unanimously unless a separate roll call vote is requested by a council member. 
Any person wishing to speak on an agenda item may come to the podium at the time the item is being discussed. Any person wishing to speak on an item not on the agenda may do so at the end of the regular meeting during citizen concerns. Please fill out a citizen concern card found outside the chamber entrance and give it to the city manager. All speakers shall state their name and address for the record and then provide their statement. I will move the consent agenda. Second. Item, agenda item three, reading of the city council minutes of July 18 and 22, 2019. I'll move that we amend the minutes of July 18, 2019 by listing council members Gretkin and Waters as absent. Is there a second? Second. Moore? Aye. Waters? Aye. Capron? Aye. Gretkin? Aye. Item, agenda item four, motion accepting the annual evaluation of the museum director. Well, yes. we need to hear about Mr. Hansen. And no, I know well, Katie, I mean, Katie will do a great job. I know she will. Three minutes. <laughs> I'll try to curb my enthusiasm. <laughs> um, but, but the board is very enthusiastic about Steve's performance. He is distinguished. Um, he, he hits all the bullet points um, that you want from your city employees, um, the museum, uh, truly is a gem and is a very important integral part of Sioux City events. Um, it's a community gathering place and it's in um, top-notch condition and it's because of the leadership in charge. Thank you. Could you give us your name and address just for the record? Yeah. That's okay. My name is Katie Colleen, uh, 3065 Valley Drive, Sioux City. Thank you. you know, we'll, we'll be able to address Steve a little a little bit more like coming on Wednesday because we have a council museum board meeting. Or a joint meeting. Or a joint meeting, Good. yeah. We look but, forward um, to that. Yeah. Well, I just want to say something because I can't be there on Wednesday. I have some yeah. other commitment. But, All right. Uh, Steve, you do a great job, I got to tell you. And, and you got wonderful bo uh, board that's, that's behind you. And that, you know what? It, we, <laughs> You got to have good people behind you to do good things. So, you know, leadership is a big thing, but so is the people you have. So, um, with that said, you awesome job. And I think we're going to keep you for another year. We're going to discuss it, but I think you're okay. <laughs> so, you're just fine. So, and I, I'd just like to add, Steve, real quickly that I know the commitment you have to the public museum and the time that you spend and, and, and opening it up to the community to have their meetings there. And uh, I've never been to one, I've been to a lot of them, never been to one where you weren't there. So I know you're genuinely interested in, in uh, the city and the things that uh, you can do, whatever you can do to help promote more community involvement. So I wanted to offer my thank you too. Really appreciate it. And thank you, Katie. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you both. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. You. Agenda item five, resolution authorizing a contribution to Siouxland Youth Athletics to support a new baseball field and artificial turf at Riverside Sports Complex. Matt, I just wanted to say one thing, and you can stay back. It's just a comment. Um, I would just say first and foremost, this is really exciting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this project. Um, but I would continue just, to, I know it's on your radar, but look for connectivity as far as sidewalks, curb cuts, like that. If we can just continue to keep that forefront of mind when we're expanding this, I think that that's, that's really critical. It's something that other people have talked to me about, and I obviously I feel the same way. So I just want to make sure it's front of mind. Ag Agenda item six, resolution adopting an updated job description for an Ask Me appointment, appointed custodian. Okay. Agenda item seven, actions relating to grants. Seven A, resolution authorizing Parks and Rec to accept a Gilchrist Foundation grant for the Chris Larson Park redevelopment project. Seven B, resolution approving a grant agreement for a community development block grant. Seven C, resolution accepting a grant agreement for home investment partnerships. Seven D, resolution accepting a grant for the emergency solutions program and 7E, resolution authorizing a regional sports authority grant application to the IEDA to offset the cost of sporting events. Anyone to be heard in on those items? Okay. 
Agenda item eight, actions relating to street closures. 8A, resolution temporarily closing a portion of Larson Park Road on September 5th for BBQ and Blues. 8B, resolution temporarily closing a portion of Pierce Street on September 20th for Downtown Partners Parking Day. 8C, resolution temporarily closing various streets in the downtown area on August 10th for the historic 4th Street Classic Car Show and Cruise Fundraiser. 8D, resolution temporarily closing various streets in the downtown area on September 14th for the Up in Smoke Barbecue Competition. 8E, resolution temporarily closing a portion of 4th Street on August 10th for Downtown Partners Art Affair. And 8F, resolution temporarily closing various streets in the downtown area on August 22nd for the Abu Becker Shriners Parade. Um, I have something to say about that. Yes, Rhonda. You know that's a parade. And I love a parade. I know you do, so I, I think I'm gonna set it up where we can maybe write, write the, the White Horse Patrol horse for us. <laughs> what do you think of that? Would you be up for that? How tall is the horse? Well, uh, it's not a rocking point. I don't like heights, <laughs> folks. I just don't like heights. Is what, that a no? But doesn't this tell you a lot is going on in there, there it absolutely does, yes. yes. A lot of good events. I'll see what we can get into. Will you please that. follow up on that horse? Well, Thank uh, you. Only, horses, if you'll you de only if you'll decorate my wheelchair like a horse. That's all <laughs> I got uh, connections. I think we can do uh, it. <laughs> agenda item nine, actions adopting construction documents. 9A, resolution adopting plans and specs for the renewable fuels project at the wastewater treatment plant. 9B, resolution adopting plans and specs for the South St. Aubin Alley Storm Sewer Improvements Project. 9C, resolution adopting construction documents for the Bluff Road Bridge Project. Agenda item 10, actions relating to agreements and contracts. 10A, resolution approving a memorandum of understanding with the Iowa Department of Homeland Security and emergency management to support the urban search and rescue team. 10B, resolution approving change order number one to the contract with Dectronics for the Tyson video and scoreboard system project. 10C, resolution approving a contract to KP Construction for the Christie Road Culvert Repair Project. I and had, oh, go ahead. I had a question about sure. that. I'm sure it's pretty timely that we need to get on this, but I was just wondering, is there any insight as far as why only one company bid? Is this something we should wait and bid later? I mean, it was about a third. Uh, we requested, uh, Gordon Fair, city engineer, we requested uh, bids from three different contractors. Yeah. Um, no, it might've been four. Uh, but this I think was, it was four. Four, and this is the only one that we got. Uh, don't know why. Yeah, I uh, guess yeah, so my even, question even is, bid. would it be timing? You know what I mean? Like if we could bid at a different time and mm -hmm. it's almost a third of the cost over kind of what we estimated it would be, I would just. Well, uh, one of the reasons we don't want to wait too long is because it's, it is a, uh, it has been a problem in the past where it has washed out the, uh, the area right near where our utility pole is. So we want to take care of that before the winter. I understand. It's just, yeah, tough when only one company comes back and you want to know why, especially when it's that much significantly higher than our other. Yes. Not much you can control there. So. Thanks, Gordon. And I need to correct myself. The consent agenda would be items 3 through 14F, not 16F. I just want to make that clear. Um, item, agenda item 10. D, resolution approving amendment number one to the consulting services agreement with JEO Consulting for the Leeds Connector Trail Project. I had a question about that one too. Matt, it's fairly simple, but I was just wondering, I thought when we discussed this and awarded this, it was part of that. Had it not been a part, had the parking stalls weren't a part of it the whole time? Matt Salvatore, Parks and Recreation Director. No, um, we were kind of looking in that area back behind Jefferson Street. Yeah, no, and I this remember. is gonna be a little bit closer for connectivity of the trail, and we, we kind of deemed that we don't need a ton of stalls, so we're gonna start with five and see how that so works. Is it the same area? Yeah, it's closer to the trail, though. Yeah. Otherwise, people have to trek up the hill to get to there. So this is easier for connectivity. 
Okay, but this wasn't, no parking stalls were a part no, of the No, no part of the original scope. No. Okay. I thought it was, but thank you. Thanks, Matt. Welcome. Agenda item 11, actions authorizing the issuance of checks. 11A, resolution authorizing payment to KP Construction for the Emergency Northern Valley Sanitary Sewer Interceptor Point Repair Project. 11B, resolution authorizing payment to HCI Construction for the Tyson Wheelchair Ramp Replacement Project. 11C, tort claims. 11C1, resolution approving partial settlement of a tort claim and authorizing payment to claimant Jacobsma. 11C2, resolution approving partial settlement of tort claims and authorizing payments to claimants Brulette, Jensen, and Bandestig and 11C3, resolution approving payment of a tort settlement with Cledden and Jenry Galicia. Agenda item 12, actions relating to property. 12A, resolution proposing to sell property near Dace Avenue. Petitioner, Aurora Photography. 12B, resolution inviting proposals for the sale of land in the combined Floyd River Urban Renewal Area, announcing the intent to accept the proposal of Siouxland Concrete and scheduling a hearing property near 11th Street. 12C, resolution scheduling a hearing on amendment number one to the combined Floyd River Urban Renewal Plan property at 3232 Highway 75 North. 12D, resolution scheduling a hearing on amendment number two to the Donner Park Urban Renewal Plan property at 2600 Al Haynes Drive and 12E, resolution granting a permit to Orion Network Services to maintain underground cable near Stone Avenue and South Maple Street. Agenda item 13, applications for beer liquor license. See the list and come forward if you have any questions. And agenda item 14, receipt of minutes. See the list and come forward if you have any questions. Anyone to be heard on our consent agenda items? Okay, ready to vote? Yep. Oh. Consent agenda is approved uh, four to zero. Hearings, item, agenda item 15, hearing and resolution approving a proposal to sell property at 3251 Dearborn Boulevard. Petitioners Douglas and Susan Waples. I will move that item. Second. The public hearing is now open. Would anyone like to speak for or against this resolution? There being none, the hearing is now closed. We're ready to vote. Agenda item 15 is approved, 4-0. Agenda item 16, hearing and resolution accepting the proposal of the United States of America to purchase land in the Donner Park Urban Renewal Area property in the 6200 block of Harbor Drive. I'll move that item. Second. The public hearing is now open. Would anyone like to speak for or against this resolution? There being none, the hearing is now closed. Agenda item 16 passes 4-0. Agenda item 17, hearing and resolution approving a proposal to sell property near 1203 Ruston Street, petitioner Bernard Bomber. I will move that item. Second. The public hearing is now open. Would anyone like to speak for or against this resolution? There being none, the hearing is now closed. Agenda item 17 passes 
Ordinance, agenda, ordinances, agenda item 18, ordinance amending chapter 8.24, offensives relating to property to adjust the dollar values for criminal mischief and theft. I'll move first reading. Second. Any discussion or questions? Who, did you initiate this? Uh, Kayla <coughs> brought it forward to conform with the recent legislative changes. So it's consistent. Caleb, could you, could, yeah, could you address this just briefly for us? So our citizens will know what we're going to be. Mayor Pro Tem and Council, Caleb Christofferson, Assistant City Attorney. The uh, uh, legislature had adjusted those values uh, uh, at the legislative session and the city, I um, drafted that ordinance to change ours to follow suit. Okay. So they're identical to what the legislature has has approved. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you, Caleb. Our first reading passes 4-0. Is there any, are there any objections to waiving the statutory rule? No. No. I'll move it. Second. Waters? Aye. Apron? Aye. Gretchen? Aye. Moore? Aye. Uh, I'll move second and third reading. Second. Thank you. Agenda item 18, second and third reading passes 4-0. Agenda item 19, ordinance amending chapter 8.68, noise control to modify the time period for permitted noise. I'll move it, first reading. Second. Any discussion on this? This is the one that moves our time to 11 o'clock p.m. for all events, correct? Yes. The only question I had was they can apply still for an exception to this. Is that right, Angel? Like if they wanted to have, or anyone, I guess, that say they wanted to have an event that was later, they could appeal to us and have it be a later time, just like we would impose an earlier time. Is that possible? Is that not possible? I don't think we've ever utilized that in the past for a later time period. Um, I think we've had some businesses or people that have applied for noise permits that have voluntarily agreed. Um, to cease noise earlier in the evening, but I don't think we've ever granted a later time period when the ordinance has a specific time set. Because that's, I guess, the only concern I would have. I guess, the like, I was thinking about different events that maybe would be going later or something, right? Like, I was thinking even the marquee that has an outdoor space, if they had an event, or, you know, if there were any other concerts or events happening that were going to go to a midnight time frame, and they came to us and said, just a one night, one event, you know what I mean? Or Grandview Park, Saturday in the park, they're gonna go till you know midnight that night or something. You know what I mean? I just wanted to see what our flexibility was or Angel Wallace, Parks and Recreation Manager. That's a great question because previously we would extend that yeah. sound permit to the event itself. So if an event does last till midnight, um, that's gonna be presented to city council. So Nicole, you can Well say, ordinance is an ordinance. So when you say right. yeah. o'clock, it's, so it's gonna be o'clock. eleven. I mean, that, that, I mean, why do an ordinance if you're not gonna mm -hmm. stick with it? So I don't like the ordinance myself, so I'm not gonna vote for it, but I think it should stay where it's at. See, and I, I guess I feel I like the consistency, right? I understand why we put it there and said, why we said we sent it back. We are always doing way earlier than 1.30 a.m., you know, and then we had other Entities, I mean, Hard Rock would be a great example that they could have went longer and decided to cut it back just as being a good partner and neighbor. And it's one of those things, you know what I mean, where I don't want us to bind us necessarily that it's like, well, now you can't go any, there isn't the wiggle room, but I like the consistency that it's always not kind of ranging or changing. Right, so when a application comes forward to me, if this ordinance is approved, then for me, I'm gonna look at it at being an 11 o'clock sound permit ending. Um, the event itself could 
of course, continue. But they're talking outside. The, the, if they're not having any type of the, Well, here's the thing. You're, you noise. PA system. Yeah. yeah. No. The, or, the noise ordinance is for outside events. Mm -hmm. For outside events. So, you, you know, I know places that you can hear them from the inside. So, you know, what's the difference, I guess, right? But being that I was in the business for a long time and, and I would have outdoor concerts, mm -hmm. yeah. um, I never had a complaint. You know, so I think it kind of depends where you're at. Um, and I think that this ordinance has come up to, because um, of one group downtown. And I think there's other groups out there should have a, have a voice in this, my, uh, the way I feel. So, what, Angel, do you know, or maybe Nicole knows better, when did it go to 1.30? I just recall uh, in my day it was midnight. 2012. 2012 it went that to 1.30 about, in the morning? That sounds about right. It's just been in the last few years. Well, I do know that there were multiple complaints uh, you know, during my day on the police department. And, <laughs> and at the bottom, of course, there was a disclaimer. If there were complaints, uh, the police department had the opportunity to uh, close the event down. That is correct. There was a bona fide complaint received. And, and I do think that uh, although we did have that, a, a couple of encounters here, I think maybe are discussions about uh, how late it should go. I think maybe they hit 11 o'clock because the two of you were able to broker a deal for us to get her down yeah, to 11. Yeah. And um, I know that in addition to those who now reside in downtown, they would appreciate this. But also there are many times when people farther north, especially when there's an outside event that, that have complaints as well. So I'm assuming this would apply to the Hard Rock and in Battery Park as well. So it applied well. to all events. Yes. So 11 o'clock seems to be a reasonable time to me, but I'm... I, I see where you're coming from, but I'm, I'm on the other side of it. You were being a policeman, I'm being a bar owner, so, you know, is there a big difference here? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I know? think I was in those yeah. a lot, too. Yeah. There you go, see? <laughs> <laughs> no, is there so, any, I don't know. Is there anyone to be heard on this item? Maybe, <laughs> I think on, Mayor would I, or Mayor Pro Tem would, would yes. it be, I mean, w this is going to take three votes, right, or three readings? It sounds like we don't have four votes to waive the statutory yeah, so, rules, so. Yeah, we won't do the second, third, and. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. well, if we if we just do it for the first, unless it right. fails, then we, we still give notice to the general public and they have the opportunity to come exactly. back. And the mayor can speak. Yes, and we do that frequently. So I think that's. And I agree to Pete's point. I remember the discussion well that, you know what I mean? We were I talking do, about yes. downtown residents. Yep, you bet. And so that's where we said 11, 11 p.m. made sense. But we weren't talking no ordinance. We were talking there that event. For that event. And I, I There's agree. a big I difference there. Too. Well, and, and Rhonda, your point's well taken, but street closures shouldn't be as difficult as we've made them in the past. The street closures, we get mixed up with what the event is and how late it's going. And we close streets all the time for events. I mean, look at today's agenda item. That had, what, four or five, six events on it, yes. didn't it? Yeah, six events. Yeah, but they know. Well, I, and I, those, yeah. those should be more straightforward than what they have been, is all I'm, is all I'm saying. Sorry, I'm looking at Rhonda. I'm not talking into the mic. <laughs> I, sorry, folks. But I, but I think we need just to be mindful. I think it was to, to to not mix the two issues. Right. Well, I'm not mixing the two. I'm just saying. I, I didn't see you were, but I'm saying the street closures is one thing. What the, how late the event goes outdoors is another exactly. with noise control. Exactly. Yeah. See, I fine. just, I just confused a, a, a bar, a bartender, a barkeeper and a, and a police officer. He's <laughs> <laughs> a lawyer, Alex. But we get along great. <laughs> For He's, point of yes, sorry, for so point of please. clarification as well, on a few of the street closures that came forward and were approved today, I believe there is a noise permit component of that. So dependent upon what version of the ordinance the council may or may not pass, that would directly impact these events. I think some of which aren't occurring until September. So staff would need to notify um, the applicants to let them know that there's a potential um, change to the noise permit piece of it. 
potentially. Uh, I think that's an important point because I assume if they've already approved the event application that they believe they can probably operate to 1.30 in the morning. Yes, based on what they've already applied for, yes. yes, that would be their understanding. And as Nicole indicated, I would have to let them know Not and notify them that, that has been, there has been a change to that. But the thing is, when you, when you apply for a noise ordinance, mm -hmm. it's 1.30. Are, are they putting down earlier? No, they are not putting yeah, down. Yeah, so there you go. Most of these events aren't till 1.30. No, these events are going pa past 11 o'clock p.m. Only yeah, one. we're talking about for the, Only one. for the sound permit. Right. So that's my point. Most of these are, are done before 11 o'clock. You know, most of these street closures are, are parades. So parades, Dan. <laughs> you ready to vote on first reading only? We won't do second and third reading tonight. Yep. Yep. I am. Sure. Okay. First reading uh, on agenda item at 19 passes three to one with council member Capron voting no. We'll come back next week then with the second and third readings, okay? All right? Yes. Agenda item 20, ordinance amending various chapters of the municipal code to increase parking rates in ramps and fines deferred from June 17, 2019 <laughs> and July 15, 2019. David. Council, Dave Carney, Public Works Director. Uh, in the RCA, it included what the initial recommendation was, which included raising both the ramp rates to match what we currently charge at the Martin Luther King ramp and increasing our meter rates and also increasing fines. Uh, after going back to the parking board, we're asking that we just raise the ramp rates and the fines at this time. Um, and during budget time, look at options to do to whether we want to change the philosophy on what we're doing downtown, whether it be continue with the metered parking or move on to a uh, free, uh, free time-limited parking and enforcement, probably higher fines in order to generate the uh, revenue. Uh, the one thing that when we went back to parking board, we got into a discussion is that our tickets after their uh, 90 days due, past due, that will typically roll them over to the county. The county charges us a fee for that, so the parking board thought it would be best to increase our fines again at 90 days past due. So in the under the offset the, that. The offset, well, it didn't actually more than offsets it, but they, the, the, the recommendation from them was uh, a parking ticket for overtime meter would be $10, it would go to $15 at 30 days, and at 90 days it would go to $30. Uh, on our other related fines, those tickets would go from 30 to $35. They would increase to 40 after 30 days and 50 after 90 days. And they, how the, my understanding of the county is they charge us $5 for every transaction. So if a person's got five tickets, we get charged $5. If they've got one ticket, we get charged $5. But that was the parking board's recommendation and that's what we included in the modified recommendation. Thanks, Dave. Any questions for Mr. Carney? No, but I, I just want every, everyone to know out there that this is not the parking meters. Correct. Parking meters are not being touched right now. Correct. Now, <clears throat> the RCA is asking that a council member amend or uh, request to amend the previously recommended ordinance recommendation, and I'd be happy to do that. Uh, I'm not sure the... It's only the parking fines for meters, not for meters themselves. Yeah. Oh, meters yeah, will still be 75 yeah, cents per hour. I Correct. Think. This is just making all of the ramps the so same amount. The more, ramps the same amount to increasing. I'm just saying to uh, right. yes. accept staff's modified yes. recommendations. Yep. And it's so, eliminating the 300 and over, which is something we didn't use. Yeah, we, we have one parking group that's at 201. So we only even right. have one group that's even in the 200 bulk rate. Exactly. I'd, I'd yes. be happy to make a motion to uh, uh, accept 
staff's recommendations if you want me to go ahead. Yes, and there were two versions of the ordinance that were included in the homework um, for the public to see. The first version of the ordinance is what was originally submitted and deferred. Right. Yes. The second and ordinance is, is the, the modified recommendations. Yes. So the blue was the original markup, and then in red um, text, you'll be able to see the additional recommendations that have been made. So the motion would be to incorporate all of the changes in the second version of the ordinance. Now you got me confused because mine's only in black and white. No, but I understand. I understand. <laughs> in the second version. Yes. Yeah. In the second right. attached version. Okay. <laughs> to amend to, to incorporate the second version. Yes. I, I would make a motion to accept staff's recommendation, staff's modified recommendation, uh, recommendations for rate increases for the parking fund ramps and parking fines. And I don't know if I need to say only, but but that's what the recommendations are, so I think we're okay. A second? Second. Thanks, Rhonda. Anyone to be heard on this item? I guess Reagan's not. You on board with this? Downtown partners? <laughs> We're okay. She's glued down today. Okay. I can't get her to the podium, but that's all right. <laughs> so this is our first reading we're voting on. Or is this an amendment? It's a, um, oh, let's vote on the amendment. That's yeah. a good point, let's Lisa. Vote. Let's vote on the amendment, and then we'll mm -hmm. do our first reading. Okay. Capron? Aye. Gretchen? Aye. Moore? Aye. Waters? Aye. Okay. Now we'll... Need a motion and need a second a, for the first reading? I'll move the first reading. Second. There you are. <clears throat> and four of us can waive the statutory rule. Are there any objections to waiving the statutory rule, or do you want to wait till the mayor's back next week? I'm. I would. I, he may want to weigh in. I. I'm fine with waiting Let's a wait. week for the mayor. Yes. Let's wait. Thank you. Okay, so first reading, 4-0. Passes. Passes, was a 4-0? Yes. I was, again, I was looking at my colleagues, so. <laughs> Agenda item 21, ordinance amending chapter 10.30, miscellaneous city rules of the road to provide uniformity and, remove, and to remove unused sections. I'll uh, move that first reading. Second. Is there anyone to be heard on item 21? Okay. First reading on agenda item 21 passes 4-0. And let's please wait on second and third readings till next week. Uh, discussion item, uh, agenda item 22, resolution awarding a purchase order to, you might have to help me, Chief, with the pronunciation, but Hyman? Yes. Hyman B Fire Equipment for one Rosenbauer aerial fire truck. I'll move that item. Okay. Okay, discussion. Mayor Pro Tem, Council, good afternoon. Tom Everett, Fire Chief and Assistant Ch Fire Chief uh, Bob Wilson. I just want to uh, mention one thing here, and I'm here to answer any questions about the RCA. I understand that it's not the easiest to uh, completely uh, figure out. But the low bid was based on the fact that there was going to be an $18,000 um, discount for prepayment on the CASI and the area. Um, Friday, we found out that those processes, um, the Chassis takes six months, and the aerial then takes another two to three, so that's nine months out, which makes the prepayment option a little less attractive and uh, because the money's either working for us or it's working for them. Um, so with that, the Aaron's Fox from Danco out of Wyoming, Michigan, would actually become the low bid provider. So either one of those two products um, which came in at number one and two for cost and number three and four for overall rating from our internal personnel who did the evaluations. So if, if we go up the second bid, then you would get it right away. Is that what you're saying? No, both, no, will have, no. both have an extended lead no. time. Okay. The Rosenbauer bid included a roughly $18,000 discount for paying, advance paying. 
um, in discussions uh, amongst finance and fire. Uh, by advance paying, we lose interest that possibly could be earned on our, by spending it up front. And if you look at it, the amount of turnover, or the amount of lead time uh, makes it a nominal savings, if any, by, by getting that discount. I will point out uh, Danko, who is the Aaron's Fox distributor, reached out to us today after finding out that they uh, possibly would, would not get the bid and said, had they been aware that a discount could have been offered, they would have offered an additional discount for prepayment. Um, however, there's nothing in our spec that prohibited or allowed that, so, and they wouldn't be allowed to put that in. At, they couldn't offer that to us now. Um, we found that to kind of be moot because of the lead time and, and the savings that we'd get with the discount is eaten up by the, the loss of interest, uh, potential interest revenue from saving that money and paying on delivery, so. Well, once the uh, chassis and aerial are the, yeah, and the aerial are, are, are arrive, so that looks like it takes about nine months. Right. How long does it take to, before you actually then get the fire truck? Typically about a year. About a year after that? Yeah. Okay. About a year total. I understand. Yeah. Oh, help me understand, Chief, please, the, this table that we have in our write-up. Yeah. Um, because the points based on ranking, isn't that the highest ranking you can have is from Reliant Fire? Am I yeah. reading that right? So, the five yeah, so the first table was, uh, this went out for an RFP, which meant that our people got an opportunity to evaluate these uh, proposals. And uh, our people ranked the Reliant apparatus overall number one. However, the pricing took it out of that number one plot. So that was basically the, piece the, the apparatus that our people said fit everything exactly the way, you know, this was kind of their dream rig, if you would. Um, that's the first chart. The second chart is based on pricing. Let's see. And so you can see there that the Reliant apparatus there came in fourth. I see. And it really knocked it down in terms of overall score. Third chart is warranty, which we felt they all met the warranty requirements. So the bottom um, chart is the overall. And again, that's based on the Rosenbauer from Hyman being low bid, which uh, depending on what we do with those uh, prepayments. So really, the Rosenbauer or the uh, Danko, Aaron's Fox, uh, either one of those would be is fine with us. See, my question about that, Chief, is so if we're supposed to look at that last, I mean, if we're supposed to look at the overall table, right, then you would have Reliant Fire overall in second place. You know what I mean? You would have them overall. So then if you're saying Rosenbauer is no longer, you know, it's not advantageous for us because we're not going to get that 18K of savings, and then we're looking at Danko, my question is then why, why have the process, why have the overall table if Reliant would have been second in line, even though that price is higher? I mean, you're telling me Tom, to look at- Tom, I can address that. They, they were asked to do an RFP to determine, to allow all bidders to come in and, and present what they had to offer. Yeah. From that fire then, uh, five people responded. Of that fire was comfortable with three of the five vendors. Uh, ultimately, um, and then it went to price from that point. Um, the top three uh, just happened to all be the three lowest bids as well. Uh, and in talking with Tom, they were comfortable with either Hyman, Danko, or uh, Reliant. But uh, at that point, then it went to the lowest cost to the taxpayer. I guess I'm still confused. <laughs> Well, the price for oh, so maybe you're saying, I guess I am confused. You're saying that overall they were comfortable with the three, those three companies, and they just so happened to be the three lowest bids. Yes. And then you ask us to look at the overall, the warranty, the points, everything like that, and Reliant would be in second place, but that's one of them that you were okay with. But now we're saying we shouldn't go with that. We should go to Danko because even though Reliance scored higher, Danko is cheaper, and we were okay with that. So then why would we do the point system? Well, I, th I think from my perspective, Alex, I, I think 
I like what you're doing because it gives everybody on the department an opportunity. Well, I don't know everybody. I'm not sure how you select form your com yes. committees, if it's the command staff, but it gives them an opportunity to weigh in on the equipment and we use your expertise to, to give us an idea of what's really important to you when you're fighting fires. And, um, but, and, and so the discount looked very attractive, but if that's not in play now, for me it would be the bottom line of the dollar. The ranking on the warranties is the same. Um, I guess I didn't understand why the table had to reflect uh, the evaluation points were multiplied by two. Why did you multiply them by two? Just Honestly, uh, that came from purchasing. So oh, okay. They, they used a, a formula basically that showed our uh, internal evaluation, the pricing and the warranty, and oh. about 100% on that. But, I mean, if we can, for me, I, it's the bottom dollar. I was going to say, and Chief, I guess I'm torn, right? Like, obviously, I don't want to spend more money. I'm not asking for the right. Cadillac, if you will, to use that um, analogy or whatever of, you know, fire trucks. I'm not saying that, but it's like, then why go through this system? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, I really want your men and women to go to the rigs and see what they're comfortable with. That I think I understand there's value there, and I think that's why you have a scoring mechanism. But if we're looking at just price, then why don't we just say we're looking at price? Because scoring points, Reliant was 10 out of what was available. I mean, that was what we wanted. It scored second, and yeah, the price was a little higher, but then, I don't know. I, I guess in my mind, it's just, I'm, I, I don't wanna, I understand the cost, Bob, like I, I totally get that, but I just look at the table and I'm like, well then what in the world's the point of the table? I think part of it was the fact that in the past we've had limited bidders. Um, where That's, we did things in the past where we put out for, uh, we put out our own specs. And um, we had very limited oh, bidders. Yeah. Recall. Which would jack up the cost, right, if I remember yeah, right? It does. And I don't think that there's the, the, the public confidence that we're getting the best deal possible. So this is the first time that we've tried this RFP process, and we were quite happy with the number of responses we've got. I think what we're trying to do is balance getting what we want and need for the, you know, the next 25 years with that price point. So um, that's kind of where we're at. And, and maybe Assistant Chief Wilson can add to that. He's the one that kind of guided this through all the uh, sales reps and everything else with our team and so forth. So do you have anything to say, Chief Wilson? No, I, I, uh, the scoring was multiplied by two because we factored in 50% uh, for the needs of the department and as, as well as the uh, conformity or the, the uh, specifications that they submitted, the exceptions that were allowed and things like that. So those were given a heavier waiting period. The warranties were giving 25% as well as pricing 25% each, yeah. which we view warranties as a price uh, a condition because yeah. 10 years down the road, we've got an aerial ladder that's cracked and we need we have to pump ten, tens of thousands of dollars in it. We, that's a cost factor to us. So when we've got a warranty that covers that, we're, we're, we're in good hands that way. Um, but we, we did feel that uh, any, as the chief alluded to, uh, any of the three that uh, he mentioned um, at, the, at the beginning, uh, we were comfortable with those. Um, the, the pricing factor did come in and it did uh, just kind of skew the numbers a bit. But, um, you know, we were comfortable with any three of those, uh, the, yeah, the Rosenbauer, the Aaron's Fox, and the uh, Pierce. And I guess I'll make one final point, right? I guess of what I'm thinking is I would really want to know the Reliant Fire versus the Danko, what made them so excep exceptional to your staff, you know what I mean, or to your officers that as far as looking at you know, how did they score 44.66 versus the 36.84? And will that unit last longer? I mean, if that is really that much better of a unit, was it the functionality or was it that no, it's a much better unit because we're talking 100K, a mm -hmm. million dollar unit. We're talking 100K. So if it's a lot better, the warranty is the same and, and your firefighters like it that much more, 
I mean, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I guess that's where, and maybe I should have called you before, Chief. I apologize. But. So, some of those came down to, uh, the differences in scoring came down to those exceptions that we allowed exceptions on anything that we proposed, um, any, any certain item. We allowed exceptions to those, you know, and uh, there are some exceptions that are very minor that we're willing to accept. Um, for instance, David Clark headset. We, we primarily use those now, and we specified those. Uh, one of the few uh, vendor-specific, manufacturer-specific things we did specify, but those were allowed exceptions as well because there are other comparable products out there. Uh, our preference is a David Clark headset. Yeah, but, you already use it. Yes, and, and, yeah. they're, and they're interchangeable within yeah. our other yeah, yeah, apparatus. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but some of, the, some of the exceptions knocked the scoring down a bit, and, um, you know, if you look at the layout, no. the diagrams, and things like that, um, I didn't personally evaluate any of them. I reviewed the, the, the evaluation at the end. Um, I had three end users, um, a captain, a lieutenant, and a firefighter who are currently assigned to the apparatus that we, that's going to be replaced. Yeah. So they're the end users. Um, with that, with that said, though, um, they felt that the needs of the department weren't, you know, as being met as high with, uh, with the Danko ones. That's why the scoring was a little less. There was a few exceptions that were noted that knocked it down a little bit in scoring too. So that's that's some of the difference there. Um, and I think there was a. Um, I'd have to look at the scoring again, but on the um, no, the warranties were all the same. So. And Council like Member Waters, keep in mind the Reliant is $100,000 more expensive than either the Danko or the Rosenbauer. Um, oh, yeah, true. So that's, so, so it's Rosenbauer, the highest scoring. But go back to the Rosenbauer and say, well, no, it's still, is that what you're Yeah, the Rosenbauer and the Danko from a price, I mean, it's a nominal price difference, but to go up to the Pierce or the Reliant is a $100,000 increase. Yeah. That's a $13,000 difference, I think, between Danko and Hyman when you add back the $18,000. I like the overall evaluation that you're doing. I hope you continue to do that, because I do think it takes, it, you, help, you help yourselves by looking at the entire unit. You're not just looking at pricing. And pricing may carry more weight, maybe it won't, but I like the fact that you look at the overall picture. Well, honestly, as long as these need to last us and you know, serve the community, um, it, having the firefighters have some say in what's going to work is much appreciated. So thank you for that. Just a point of clarification <laughs> on the pricing. During our evaluation process, we were not made aware of the pricing. That was a final component yeah. added in. So that didn't influence us anyway Good. during that process. Yeah, I think that's great. Excellent. Okay. So I, we lied. Have a... I lied. I would have one more question then. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So then my last question, hopefully we'll see, is, um, is it then the timing that we're looking at then? Because if Rosenblauer and Aaron's Fox or Denko, whatever we're saying them interchangeably, if they're basically the same cost because we're not getting that $18,000 rebate or whatever you want to call it, was it timing then? It's going to take Rosenbauer. Is that where the nine months comes into play? No, both of them are take about the same amount of time to build. Um, the, the bottom line is, is that the Rosenbauer, when we wrote this, was, you know, came in cheaper because of that discount. 18,000, yep. yeah. So they received an extra point or whatever the case. Yeah. Um, once we spoke with finance and the city manager, we realized that, you know, the interest that we would lose on the pre yeah. didn't really make that worthwhile. So honestly, they kind of flip-flopped in terms of low, low cost, if that makes sense. Because then my argument would be, then if, if cost is almost, I mean, it's nominal, right, is what we're saying? Then you would look at your scoring points. Well, what did your staff enjoy more? And then you'd look at that and then back to Rosa. What would you suggest is a better choice? Yeah, I feel like a, what is it, the quarterback or armchair quarterback? You tell me what you think, Chief. Well, you're still recommending Rosenbauer. Yeah, I don't want to put, I don't want to put fire on the spot yeah. because they've been criticized in the past for coming in and claiming right. that they came with the sole source. Um, so I will, my recommendation would be if, if the council wants to place a value on staff analysis, um, even though it's slightly higher, uh, the Rosenbauer bid is slightly higher, um, that would be the preference of the fire department. I, I don't want to speak for Tom. He's well, very, been very it. clear to me that either would be uh, graciously accepted by the department, but if you look at the overall scoring, the Rosenbauer scored slightly higher. 
Yeah, I appreciate that because we have been in that situation where uh, we don't want to recommend a brand. And uh, I think that that's volumes. Okay. Yeah. Is there anyone else to be heard on agenda item 22? Okay, ready to vote? Yep. All right. Spread the motions for Rosenbauer. Yep. Okay. I'd like to say thanks to Chief Wilson and, and his team for all their work on this. Yeah. Yep, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item 22 passes 4-0. Agenda item 23, resolution awarding a service provider agreement to American Coatings and Welding for the fire hydrant painting project. I'll move that item. Second. Any discussion? John. All right. You excited to get this going? Superintendent, uh, do you guys have any questions about it? We're on the right path, right? I want to get a contractor in here that will keep working and yeah. do a good job where we don't have to fight. Well, thank you. I actually, we appreciate it. Uh, well, I was going to say, John and I had uh, a brief discussion on the street when, when I saw him when I stopped down to get homework. Um, and and we, had an ex we, we had a discussion about this, and he told me it was coming up. And... I noticed that, uh, well, John, I think, I don't want to put words in your mouth, maybe you want to share, but you American coatings and welding, you thought had the experience there factor? Actually, there are a metal painter, so I'm just hoping they actually do a better job since they know how to paint. Okay. But I just noticed. Every, every other time we've always went with the striping company yeah. or primarily for roads. So. Okay. Trying something different to try to get forward. John, is Lines and Stripes primarily a striping company? Yes. Okay. And we, okay. We've had them in the past, and we've had issues with them, so I'd like to try something okay. different for a change. Be be because I was wondering, because they were from Sioux City, that maybe that was something we wanted to consider. If you consider, remember, they but actually painted hydrants for about three years for us. So. Okay. And I wanted to make sure that we, we understood that there is the experience factor here, and they actually do uh, better work in our metal? The one, uh, American Coatings from Ottawa, I'd like to see. I, okay. I believe they do a better job. I think they're more experienced on painting metal. We did switch paints this year. We're using a two-part epoxy. It's nano paint. So I think the, the striping company that started the year, they just weren't experienced with it. And I, have a, I would like to see a painter that actually experienced with the paint use it. Because if this paint works, we could get probably 10, 12 years out of a hydrant painting. So that will help us make this town look a lot nicer when it comes to hydrant painting. And as you can see now, some of the hydrants that were painted two years ago are already starting to rust, so. John, how many hydrants do we have? Uh, almost 5,000. 4, how long do you, do you think it'd take for them to? Right now, we're on about a nine-year rotation. So if we can get these hydrants to last, it's so it, it, So we're doing the rotation, so they get the nine years, and then they just start doing the um, same? Yes. So. And we do it in zones now. Before it was just sort of scattered through towns. Now we actually just do areas. Just a three year. Yeah, so if you three. call me and say I live in this area, I'd be able to tell you about how long it's going to take. Right. Thank you, John. Right. Ready to Thanks. vote? Yes. Okay. Agenda item 23. I think I'm timing this right, and I don't. Passes 4-0. <laughs> <laughs> Any citizen concerns? Any citizens to be heard? Council concerns? Council Member Gretgen? No, I can't think of any, but thank you. You're welcome. Council Member Cape Run? Jeez, after two weeks, we don't have anything? <laughs> wow, I don't either. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't have any things or emotion. Oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Waters? We already talked about our joint meeting Wednesday, correct? Sure, yeah. Correct. At noon. Oh, actually, I feel like I have a lot of things. Um, okay, so I'll get started with the first one. The first one would be I had a meeting for the complete count for the census work. Um, there's a work group that's put together, and I was sitting on that. I thought that discussion went really well. The mayor was, um, and the mayor, and I thought everyone on council kind of. Uh, said that the census is a great deal. I mean, monetary as well as making sure that everyone's counted here in Sioux City. We looked at the areas that are not being counted. Uh, something that I really appreciated this year is uh, it seems that Seaboard Triumph Foods, Tyson, as well as Empirical Foods, 
all are wanting to coordinate this effort um, with their employees, which is something that I think is, um, could be highly beneficial as well as the school system. Um, they all want to coordinate an effort to make sure that everyone is counted. So that was, I just wanted to update the rest of council. The second thing that, that I, yeah. thank you. Yeah. The second thing that I wanted to bring up, and I appreciate that Mike is here, because Mike, I have a question, or I just would like, you can say, I think, well, it's up to you. It's just something I wanted to bring up. Uh, a citizen reached out to me talking about disability bus passes. Okay. Um, and the concern was, and, and I understand these concerns from when I received um, benefits, um, was what seems to happen, or at least it happened this last month, is this individual um, has a disability pass for the buses and pays the monthly rate, right? Mm -hmm. And then his bus pass only goes to the end of the year. And so then it was void, it wouldn't work. Well, the check that he receives from the state doesn't come until the Friday. So like this month, it was canceled on Wednesday and then he didn't get paid that until Friday and wouldn't be able to. So there's a gap in services where he wasn't able to ride, you know what I mean, during those days. And I asked, I, as I always do when people come to me with concerns for suggestions or what their thoughts were, you know, how it could be addressed. The one thing we somewhat threw around was almost like a grace period, you know, if you've had a disability pass. I don't know, the argument I always used was, hey, this disability probably isn't going away month, month by month. Um, I didn't know if there was a way we could have like a three day grace period or if it's if it rarely happens. I just said I wanted to bring it to you and your team. I trust your judgment far more than just me. Yeah, um, it, it would be it might be a challenge to manage that for individual basis. Um, it depends if he's getting funding from an organization or it's just private pay situation. I mean, state. It's probably a lot of facts. It's like social security. Okay like SSDI, those type of things, you know what I mean? With yeah, I guess, I guess it's not anything we're opposed to. Nobody just brought it forward as a... Yeah, it's, it's no, 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 and I figured that was yeah. the case, and that's why I just said, because I remember when I received those funding sources, you know what I mean? I didn't have right. money other than that coming in either. So if I, if I relied on the bus for transportation and there was a two-day gap, right. if a person can't make that up, I would just... Yeah, let me... So if you can, if you can ask or look into that, it or anything, yeah, I would just appreciate... Okay behind it all right very good and the last thing that I wanted to bring up um, we actually just uh, voted on it what this Saturday is the art fair right yep so this this Saturday is the art fair down in, in between Ho-Chunk and the museum uh, if you haven't been there before it's it's really a great time it was something that uh, downtown partners started last year this will be the second annual and uh, usually, I think we have over 40 vendors this year. So over 40 vendors, it's growing uh, quite a bit. So I'm really excited about that. The second thing I would mention was the um, employees day at the ballpark um, is Saturday as well. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Yep. Okay. Hopefully you're all able to participate. I am not able to, unfortunately. Yeah, and neither. Well, and I was looking out at them, but. <laughs> Okay, anyway, thanks, Alex. That's all I have. Mr. Padmore? Um, I believe one item, uh, National Night Out, is tomorrow night. Yes. Oh, that's at, right. Starting at 6 o'clock at various locations right. around Sioux City. See what happens? I miss one. And I don't know if the mayor, I, I, I really think it's a good idea. I didn't hear back from the mayor on this, um, but I think it's a good idea. There are nine locations, and that's a two-hour period, isn't it, from 6 till... Six to eight. eight, six six to eight. eight. And, and in the past, and, uh, council members have kind of divided up and gone. And I think we should do that to make sure we have all of the sites covered. Now, whether, and if you want to cover more sites than that, but at least cover the ones that it's you're It's hard to get out of there, I'll tell you. Could you send me your preferences for uh, for the site so that we have, it be two, four, six, eight, and we'll have the mayors. Is that all right if we handle it that way? Actually, what Sorry, they, I'd ask that they send them to Jessica and myself, and we will disseminate that information for you. Okay. So let's make sure we get all the sites covered, because I don't know about you, but when you get to those, it's so much fun that you at least spend a half an hour. So you just can't get to nine sites, and we don't want to leave anyone out. So send your preferences to Mr. Padmore and Jessica Johnson. Yep. Quickly as we can get them, we'll get them out tomorrow morning. Okay, and if there are any missing, let me know, and I'll I'll probably just wait till these three sign up, and then I'll take okay I'll take whatever is not preferred because I they're all good to me, so we'll find out. Thank you, Mr. Padmore. City Attorney. 
Du Bois, anything? Clerk? Nothing? I move that nope. we adjourn. Second. Moore? Aye. Waters? Aye. Capron? Aye. Gretkin? Aye.